Over the years, we have seen many companies offering different versions of the same software with different features. For example, Maya was split into Maya Complete and Maya Unlimited in the early 2000s, with Unlimited offering advanced features like fluid simulation and hair systems, which the other version called Complete didn't have. In the same vein, Houdini offered Houdini Master and Houdini Escape, where Escape was a cheaper version with many high-end simulation tools that were disabled. These splits were actually intended to serve different market tiers, like professionals versus students and studios versus freelancers. But what Autodesk did with 3ds Max was kind of different. In 2008, they launched 3ds Max Design and 3ds Max the regular version. And to say Max users were confused is an understatement, because chaos erupted in forums and users started asking a lot of questions. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at this subject and see whether this was a good or stupid decision by Autodesk. One of the most interesting things that happened in the 3D industry was in 2008, when Autodesk had a genius idea of introducing two editions of Max, 3ds Max and 3ds Max Design. The idea was to target different user groups, the regular Max for game dev and VFX artists, and a specialized 3ds Max Design for architects and designers with extra visualization tools. But at the time, it didn't make a lot of sense, at least to some people. At the time, I personally started using Max 9 a few months earlier, before this whole thing happened, and I didn't pay much attention to it, because I liked what I was using. It was great, but still, seeing Autodesk switching from naming versions numerically like Max 7, 8, and 9 to versions based on years like 2008, 2009, and so on, at the same time introducing two versions of the same software was kind of weird. In theory, it kind of made sense, but in practice, it led to a lot of confusion and frustration, especially in the 3ds Max community. Upon reviewing his subscription in 2009, one user was surprised to be told that he had to choose between the two versions, and he said, my subscription is up for renewal and the dealer is telling me I have to make a choice. He says regular Max contains the SDK, and it is for gamers, and Max Design is for visualization. Anyone have heard about this choice? You see, back then, lots of 3ds Max users were asking these kind of questions because it was new and confusing. There was also typical reactions at the time like this. There are two 3ds Max products now, what's the difference? In reality, there were very few differences, but let's take a look at them anyways. In Max, SDK stands for Software Development Kit which is a collection of tools, libraries, documentaries, and sample code that allows developers to extend, customize, and deeply modify the software. It kind of provides direct access to Max's core functionality at a lower level, using programming languages such as C++. Essentially, the 3ds Max SDK is used to create powerful plugins, in addition to custom tools, modifiers, renderers, and even entire new systems inside Max. It is what big studios and third-party developers use when simple scripting like Max Script isn't enough. For example, many famous third-party render engines such as V-Ray or Arnold originally integrated into Max using SDK, which shows how powerful it is. And developers can add new geometry nodes in addition to animation controllers, UI elements, import and export formats in addition to other stuff, all by tapping directly into the heart of the program. The gist of it, without SDK, you couldn't develop or install custom plugins to the same extent, which made the design version less appealing for studios that needed technical extensibility. Autodesk actually made an effort to distinguish between the software, I mean the two versions, but the twin naming strategy caused widespread misunderstanding, and many artists accidentally installed design when they meant to use the regular Max version and vice versa only to realize that everything was basically identical, except for missing SDK or different default UI setting. But for people who actually really need SDK, I think it was a problem. One of the core reasons why I think Autodesk split Max into two versions was to attract more users from the design industry, especially architects, engineers, and product designers, who were previously hesitant to adopt a tool associated mostly with games and VFX projects. And by branding it as 3ds Max Design, Autodesk kind of sent a signal that this version was purpose-built for visualization professionals, 
with features like accurate daylight simulation, photometric lighting, and interoperability with CAD and BIM software. This move was intended to make it easier for firms in architecture and engineering to justify the purchase of Macs, since it felt more aligned with their industry standards, even if under the hood it was still largely the same software. Also, to some extent, another reason might be compliance with design standards. The design version included certified tools like manta rays, photometric lighting, and daylight analysis to meet architectural simulation standards, which entertainment users, like in film and game development, don't really require. Nonetheless, forum discussions from that era are full of people asking which version they should use, or if they would be missing out by picking one over the other. Autodesk's own product manager at the time, Ken Pimentel, jumped into forums to try to clarify. And he said, 3ds Max and 3ds Max Design are tools for specialists. There can be no confusing it. That doesn't mean removing specialist tools or limiting anyone. End quote. Despite Pimentel's assurance that the parallel versions wouldn't be confusing, there were undeniably too many confused users. Even the notion of calling one version design, implying the other one wasn't for design, felt like a branding step in the wrong direction. After several years, Autodesk recognized that the split was more trouble than it was worth, and by 2016, the company retired the design variant entirely. Many features overlapped, and professionals in architecture were increasingly using the same advanced tools as those in game dev and VFX, like scripting, plugins, real-time workflows, and so on. The split also created complications for support, in addition to training and licensing. So to streamline the development and avoid market fragmentations, Autodesk came back to their senses and unified everything under the 3ds Max brand, starting with version 2014, while retaining all the core features from both versions. Autodesk kept nearly all the key features of Max design, ensuring that architectural and visualization users didn't lose critical tools, even though there weren't that many. And here is a few. Civil View a set of tools for animating and visualizing civil engineering projects, like roads and infrastructure. There is also exposure lighting simulation, which was used for accurate daylighting analysis and photometric lighting simulations, and this is especially useful in architectural visualization. There is also a system called Physical Sun and Sky System, for realistic lighting based on geographic location, in addition to date and time. There is also AEC-specific materials and templates, which is basically architectural materials and settings tailored for visualizing interiors, exteriors, and CAD imported models. And of course, we can't forget Revit and AutoCAD interoperability. After 2016, the community lay out a sigh of relief, so no more double install choices or explaining to newbies why there were two Maxes. In hindsight, the 3DS Max vs 3DS Max Design Saga became a textbook example of well-intentioned branding that ended up confusing the very users it was trying to help. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.